Start off by um, this cult that there has been relatively few human level research in the discourse of globalization that we have forgotten to map the human experiences in the globalization discourse. So uh, that is where this idea of my research begins to map the experiences of international academics at the national universities in Japan. So I got funding to do a study which involves me traveling to seven national universities, uh, the top seven universities which happen to be the formal imperial universities, where I could talk to foreign academics and ask them numerous questions about their time in Japan and sort of create a concept map of uh, how their life is, the issues that they're facing and overall what they think of Japan. Now this study is quite... Um, significant for a number of reasons. First, because um, Japan really lacks in terms of international academics. Um, so Tokyo, you have four percent faculty being international, whereas in Oxford and Harvard and Cambridge, the number is as high as 30 or 40 percent. So for Japan to be a competitive university in the world, it has to increase uh, the numbers of its international faculty. Um, and uh, one of the reasons is because of the ranking regime, you know, you have Times, you have QS, you have Leiden, so you need to increase international faculty members in order to climb up these rankings and Japan is quite competitive, uh, which is why one of its policies is to do so. So when you do that, you've got to know about uh, the experiences of the current international faculty that is there, so you can tailor your policies to make it better for them to stay in Japan and for newer good academics to come to Japan from abroad. Um, so in that sense, my research would be contributing to this broader discourse of globalization of uh, universities in Japan uh, because it really shows what international academics qualitatively feel when they're here in Japan. Um, a bit of a context, um, the current scenario is that there is uh, 4% um, academics who are foreign, um, that's the national average by mix. Uh, the status of foreign academics has changed since the 1980s. In the 1980s, um, professors were considered as civil servants, uh, which is why you needed to have a Japanese nationality to become a full professor with tenure in Japan. But that is no longer required, which means you can now have foreigners um, becoming regular faculty members. That's a major shift that has taken place. Um, and more recently, Prime Minister Abe has expressed his desire uh, to hire 1,500 uh, foreign researchers in the next three years. That's a very, very ambitious goal. Um, and when you look at um, job advertisements, only 50 places uh, are advertised. So it's not happening with the pace it should. You know, but that, that goal is out there. One of the reasons that goal is out there is because uh, you'll have a huge number of professors retiring in the coming three years, and the government's goal is to replace them with foreign uh, researchers. So what is the current scenario? Um, there are two codes that quite explain it. The sustainability of many Japanese institutions of higher education is dependent on the injection of a large number of foreigners. Uh, by Mr. Violet, um, who are great researchers of internationalization in Japan. And there's another code by Rivers. Um, foreign academics have a long history of being included for certain purposes and excluded for others, very often being treated as temporary outside visitors rather than serious carrier minded professionals. So we see a contrast here in how academics who have studied this area view. Uh, the situation to be. We have a need for foreign faculty members, uh, however when they do come here, academics who have researched this topic feel that there are certain things lacking. Um, and my study sort of takes it forward to see what exactly that is. Um, so the research methodology was, it was a structured, semi-structured interview uh, with 22 uh, international academics at the seven national universities, Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka, Hokkaido, Tokyo, Kyushu, I might be forgetting one, Tohoku, um, uh, where I talked with uh, selected uh, international faculty members uh, on a one-to-one -one basis for uh, about an hour. 
I didn't do this research alone. I had uh, Professor Beverly Yamamoto with me, who is the director of uh, one of the colleges um, at Osaka University. Um, so it's a collaborative project. We drew on our established networks to um, uh, contact academics, um, wherein we made contacts with 22 academics from both the arts and the sciences faculty. And um, the interview lasted from 60 minutes up to you know two hours, um, and the feedback that we got was that it was it was quite like therapy for many of the international faculty members. I'm quite happy with that. I'm personally interested in hearing people's stories, so I was quite excited to you know go around Japan, visiting universities and talking to wonderful people. So what do we know? Uh, first, for the characteristics of our respondents, um, most people. Um, that we talked to were associate professors, they were lecturers, uh, they were assistant professors, and they were full professors. So we had quite a good range of uh, positions represented in a sample. Um, most people were on tenured positions at national universities that we talked with, um, although two -third, one third of them were on contract. A few were you know, moving from contract to tenure, so they were on tenure track. Um, most people that um, are now teaching at Japanese universities studied at Japanese universities, so they had a previous link, um, and they found the, this particular job, the current job, through networking as opposed to um, advertisements and such. So that's important to know um, who exactly we talked with. So what did we know? Uh, there are a few issues, few themes that came up, and that is what I want to discuss with you today. Not per se. Um, I would not be coaching um, academic experiences today, but I would be uh, talking with you about general themes that emerged. You know. One of the major themes that emerged was the retention issue. Um, while you attract foreign faculty members to Japan, are you able to retain them? The answer was mixed. You know. There were serious concerns about family. So if somebody has a family member abroad, they would not they would try not to be in Japan. Um, at the same time, if you have a Japanese spouse, uh, there is a higher degree of chance that, that the person, the professor, would like to stay in Japan. But in both of these cases, schooling emerges as a major issue. Um, while there are many international schools in Japan, um, it is often difficult for a professor and a professor's salary to send their kids to international schools. and. Um, the general idea that emerged was that people were not happy uh, with Japanese education for their kids. Uh, so when it came to schooling, uh, they wanted to go back uh, to their home country or somewhere else. Uh, the other uh, issue that emerged was that um, Japan is currently attracting people who have some link to Japan academically. So people who are researching about Japan, about some issues related to Japan, do come here, do research here. And uh, Japan is quite good at retaining them, but it is not attracting talent besides people who are studying Japan. Uh, that came up as a major issue. Um, there are many structural issues as well. Um, I didn't know how many of you are at national universities, but there certainly tends to be a lot of bureaucracy involved, you know. Bureaucracy that tends to be overly bureaucratic. There's a massive audit culture that, that, that people are fed up with, um, professors are fed up with, and this emerged as a major issue in every interview we had. That said, this is not a, an issue pertaining to international academics, you know, it's, it's for everybody, Japanese faculty members as well. Um, but that does mean uh, that Japan doesn't have a very good image, um, you know, if it wants to attract great academics. Um, Transparency with contracts and what was expected of them when they were hired um, came up as an issue. So in the UK or USA you would find contracts to be very detailed, really mentioning what you're expected to do once you're hired. As opposed to Japan when you get a professor's contract, the only thing that's mentioned in the contract is you're going to be a professor from this day onward. So it doesn't really say what, sh what, what your roles and expectations are. It doesn't really say uh, if you're on contract, whether you'll be able to go on tenure track. So carrier path uh, expectations out of a contract 
um, not being on a 10 year track and not knowing what's going to happen after three years, that emerged as a major structural issue. Um, and there were motivational issues which are quite important. Now if professors don't know Japanese, there's a higher chance that they will not be promoted and that they will be on contract based positions. Um, and they will not be able to participate in committee work and as such, uh, which means they will not be contributing to the faculty uh, as a whole, you know, that undermines their position as a professor. Um, and most professors who were on contract based positions also did not know Japanese. Um, so Japan is not a good place for professors who do not know Japanese is the image that's being portrayed um, and I can say that from my research. Uh, job security became an issue when we heard professors talking about how they did not know if their contracts were to be renewed after five years or ten years. Uh, the major issue is that um, uh, MEX has said that any professor who is hired for ten years has to be made permanent. What universities have done to get around that rule is after you have been hired for ten years we're going to fire you. Um, so that is a big issue. Yeah. Um, there are many teaching only positions and these are especially positions where professors are expected to be educators and not researchers. So there's lack of research funding there. Um, at the same time, teaching only position means that there, there's a career dead end since you're not doing any research. But these teaching only positions are in programs that have short term funding, if some of you are aware of. Global 30, you know, English medium programs. So any program that has short-term funding and is not in a regular faculty tends to have educators and not educators and researchers, you know, the, the traditional idea of professors. And not knowing Japanese, not having job security um, is a major motivational issue that often leads to what I like to call degemization or uh, the isolation of foreign academics. Uh, you know, in, the, in their own bubble, so they're not able to move across their own island to, to be a regular part of the committee. That came up as a major issue. That said, the overall experience surprisingly was positive or neutral. You would expect that um, um, professors would not be happy here, but at least in the top national universities, the positives that people had outweighed the negatives, and some of these were that People are quite happy with the research support being provided in Japan, um, if their research field is Japan. People are quite happy with the academic freedoms and autonomy. There's incredible autonomy once you're a professor at a Japanese university. Uh, there's incredible amounts of research funding available as Kakeni. There's incredible amount of funding available for basic research that we see disappearing in the West, in the UK and US education systems which makes it a great place to do research. Um, the general environment of Japan as a safe country, a safe society, uh, does add to the satisfaction level of um, professors. So the overall experience has been positive, although I've mentioned you know, many issues that came up. But there's one sentiment that I would like to leave you all with, um, and I would like to read this from a blog, not from my study, which I thought really concluded one of the major issues, which is job security. Uh, so in the blog, uh, this person mentions, I also wondered with respect to my own case, what if I wish to remain in Japan? Should I rent an apartment for only three years at a time? Should I consider home ownership as being too risky? Plan to get a new girlfriend or wife every th three years just in case my contract is not renewed? Lease a car for three years at a time rather than purchase one? In short, how is a person supposed to plan a life by three year increments and why should anyone have to? So the notion that we have seen in the West, you know, 40-50% of our academics being on contract positions and seriously undermining the entire academic institution, that is happening increasingly in Japan and especially with foreign academics who are hired here. What that means is that once you don't have job security for professors, even if that means you're not hiring good professors, which is why you don't want to give job security to them, you have bad quality teaching, you have bad educators, and you have bad researchers. So job security is a major issue that I always focus on that needs to be improved. Um, 
So in conclusion, there are some points to remember. One, that the situation at top national universities is better than we expect it to be. Uh, there are areas of improvement, and those include job security, social mobility. There tends to be glass ceiling for foreign professors. I haven't seen a foreign professor in a, uh, at national universities in a, a higher level vice presidential or advisor to the president that level position. Certainly the person I did this research with, Beverly Yamamoto, is a director. Uh, so good for her, but um, not all academics are able to make it uh, to positions where they can make a difference. Um, um, another scope for improvement is time to do research, and this especially has to do with social sciences, but you need to go out of your labs, into the field, talk to people, anthropological research. So time for research also came up as a major issue, obviously that um, is pertinent to Japanese academics as well. So the major limitations of the study were that um, we uh, did not study second or third Thai university. So uh, what I'm talking to you about is you know, a general picture of top national universities. I'm sure the situation at uh, universities that are not being really funded well by MEX, you know, uh, that lie lower on the ladder, the situation is much worse, I'm pretty sure. And the study is limited in a sense that we talk to professors uh, that we could gather using our snowballing technique, you know, using our personal contacts. But certainly I think it makes a great contribution to the overall discourse of globalization in Japan in the sense that it maps experiences of one of the major stakeholders, which is foreign academics. And um, as we analyze the data and transcribe the data, we have 20, 20 hours of recordings, I think we'll be able to produce um, and put out a paper that would um, have more details, more experiences, and personal context interwoven into uh, the broader changes that are taking place so that you can have a better sense of what the situation is like. Um, thank you very much. I know we're going to have the questions at the end. Um, so All right. Thank you.